Hi everyone, my name is Katie Connor. I'm an orthopedic surgery PA in Charleston, South Carolina, and I've been working in PA education for about 10 years now. This is going to be the second video in my series of anatomy reviews, and this is designed for students at the professional level, paramedics, RNs, PAs, NPs, OTs, and PTs. And my goal for this is to kind of simplify some of the more difficult concepts in your anatomy course. If you're interested in purchasing the full versions of these, papods.weebly.com, you can find all of the information there. So we're gonna get started on our lower extremity review. These are our roadmaps. Uh, if you'll grab some blank paper and some colored pencils, it really helps to draw this out. It helps to solidify it in your mind when you're actually doing that muscle memory. So I promise that I know it seems silly, but it will work. We're gonna start with the arterial flow to the lower extremity. And we're gonna start at the common iliac artery before it divides into the external and the internal. We're gonna talk about three branches of the internal but then we're gonna kind of leave that part for the pelvis review. So the common iliac will give off an internal iliac branch and three branches off of that, the superior gluteal, the inferior gluteal, and the obturator artery. And those are the three branches that we're gonna worry about for this unit off the internal iliac. We're really gonna focus more on the external iliac. As the external iliac goes underneath the inguinal ligament, it just changes names and it becomes the femoral artery. And this will travel along the length of the femur. There's an early branch of the femoral artery called the deep femoral artery. And if you're reading some textbooks, you may see the Latin version of this. Don't let that confuse you. So deep femoral will give off a circumflex blood supply to the femoral neck. And the femoral neck is a very important anatomical structure because it serves as a bridge from the leg to the body. And in people who are osteoporotic and have a quote hip fracture, it's usually a fracture of the femoral neck. Anytime you see the word circumflex, that means that there's a large or a circular blood supply to that area because it's a very important structure. So off of the deep femoral, we get the lateral and the medial circumflex femoral arteries. Also off of the deep femoral artery, we get the perforating branches, which provide additional blood supply to the femur. As the femoral artery goes through the adductor hiatus, it now changes names and it's called the popliteal or the popliteal artery. And this travels along the posterior side of the knee. Once the, um, before the popliteal artery gets to the popliteal fossa, it's gonna give off some branches called the genicular anastomoses. And these are collateral blood supply to the knee joint. Once it gets into the popliteal fossa, it's going to split into the anterior and the posterior tibial. And we're gonna talk about the posterior tibial for a second. So just kind of keep in mind, we're going down the posterior side of the leg. The posterior tibial will give off a branch called the fibular artery. If you're reading in a textbook and you see the word peroneal instead of fibular, it's the same thing. It's just a newer nomenclature for naming this is the fibula, fib, fibular rather than the peroneal. The fibular artery will give off the calcaneal branches, and this kind of goes down to the posterior side of the foot, kind of the ankle region, supplies blood to that area. The posterior tibia will also give off a medial plantar and a lateral plantar blood supply to the plantar or the underside of the foot. And the lateral plantar is going to be the more important one as far as this is what connects the underside of the foot to the top side of the foot. So the lateral plantar will give off the deep plantar arch, and then it will dive from the bottom side of the foot to the top side of the foot, and it will emerge between the first and second metatarsals. Hint, hint, if you're doing a cadaver lab, this is always a really good one to tag because it's the only vessel in that area. So the lateral plantar will become the deep plantar artery as it comes between the first and second metatarsals from the bottom side of the foot to the top side of the foot. Now we're gonna go down the anterior side of the leg. So the other division of the popliteal artery is the anterior tibial that will travel underneath the inferior extensor retinaculum. And it will give off two branches to the malleolus or the ankles, uh, the medial and the lateral part of the ankle. So you have the medial anterior malleolar and the lateral anterior malleolar. Then we proceed down to the dorsal or the top side of the foot and we get the dorsalis pedis. This is the one that you can feel very easily, the pulse in your foot. It's lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon, uh, but it's on the top side of the foot and you can feel that pretty nicely. Off of the dorsalis pedis, you'll get a medial and a lateral tarsal branch. The lateral tarsal will connect with the dorsalis pedis with the arcuate artery, and it kind of looks like an arch, hence the name arcuate. Off of the arcuate, you'll get the dorsal metatarsal arteries, 
and then the dorsal digital artery. So this is the complete lower limb arterial map. Next, we're gonna to move to the sacral plexus. If you've watched the upper extremity video, you've seen the brachial plexus. This is basically the brachial plexus, but a little bit easier and lower down. The sacral plexus starts L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3, and these are the branches off of the spinal cord. L4, L5, and S1 will come together to form the superior gluteal nerve, so L4 to S1. L5, S1, and S2 are gonna to come together to form the inferior gluteal nerve. You're gonna see a pattern here in a second. L4, L5, and S1, we've seen this already, come together, the nerve to quadratus femoris and inferior gemellus. So it actually tells you what the muscles it supplies it, so that's nice. So if you see here that the superior gluteal nerve and the nerve to quadratus femoris have the same supply, you're absolutely correct. So L4, S1, L4, S1. We're gonna see another repeat of this in a second. So L5, S1, S2, they come together to form the nerve to obturator internus and superior gemellus. So again, a dual named nerve for the muscle and L5, S2, L5, S2. So if you can remember that these just kind of alternate. So you have L4, S1, L5, S2, L4, S1, L5, S2, and that will help you keep these together. Then you have the tibial, and the tibial nerve is a very large nerve. That, get branch, that gets branches from L4, L5, S1, S2, and S3. So all parts of the sacral plexus. Then you have something called the common fibular, or you may read the common peroneal L4, S2. So it gets it from all of them except for S3. Now, if you do your cadaver dissections and you look at the back of the leg, there's a giant nerve that runs down the back of the leg. That's called the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve is actually made up of two different portions. It's made up of the tibial portion and the common fibular portion, the tibial being the larger part of that nerve. Then we have S1, S2, S3, and that will give us the posterior femoral cutaneous. So the back of the leg, uh, the back of the thigh, and just skin innervation. So that was your sacral plexus. Let's move on, and I'm gonna get rid of the video here so I'm not in the way. The leg nerve map general, if you remember from the upper extremity, we were talking about how to memorize this. You try not to memorize each muscle, individ muscle individually. You try to kind of remember them as a group because they're a lot, they'll be a lot more digestible that way. So we're going to start with the nerves of the leg. So the first one is going to be our lateral femoral cutaneous. And remember that if you see the word cutaneous, we know that that's sensation only. There's no motor innervation there. So the lateral part of the thigh sensory comes from the lateral femoral cutaneous. Next, we have the femoral nerve. And the femoral nerve is going to provide innervation to the muscles um, that flex the, nip, the, flex the hip and extend the knee. And we'll see that in the next slide here, those specific muscles. This also provides anterior medial sensory part to the thigh. The obturator nerve gives you medial thigh sensation and also supplies the muscles that adduct or bring the thigh into the body. Then we have the saphenous nerve, which is responsible for anterior and medial leg sensation. Then we have the common fibular nerve, and this is before the fibular nerve splits. And this is kind of a good exam question on this one because there's some debate about what this really innervates, but the biceps femoris short head is the only thing that the common fibular nerve innervates. That's why it's such a good exam question. So the common fibular nerve is the biceps femoris short head. It also can provide some sensory to the posterior and lateral leg. Then we have the superficial fibular, and the superficial fibular comes on the lateral side of the leg, and that's responsible for foot eversion, so bringing the foot outwards. I'll show you what foot eversion, you're bringing the foot outwards. Okay, so that's the superficial fibular nerve. Then we have the deep fibular nerve, and the deep fibular nerve is, is going to be responsible for the innervation of the muscles that come down the anterior side of the leg. So the muscles that when they're contracting, they're responsible for dorsiflexion, inversion of the foot, or bringing the bottom side of the foot medially, and then extension of the toes. Now, if we come around the back of the leg, we're going to start up here, kind of the gluteal region. So the superior gluteal nerve is going to be in charge of the muscles that abduct, abduct, and medially rotate the thigh. The inferior gluteal nerve is gonna be responsible for the muscles that extend and laterally rotate the thigh. 
The sciatic nerve, remember we talked that that is made up of tibial and fibular parts, and this helps to extend the hip and flex the knee, and that's gonna be the tibial part of that. So if you can remember that the tibial nerve is the important nervous supply to the entire posterior part of the leg. So if you're ever in a panic and you know that you're looking at the back part of the leg, always pick tibial nerve. This is responsible for plantar flexion or pushing down like you're pushing on a gas pedal, inversion of the foot, and then flexion at the toes. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh, that's a really long way to say the posterior part of the thigh, and it provides sensory to the skin in that area. And then finally, we have the sural nerve, and the sural nerve is a cutaneous nerve as well, so it gives posterior lateral leg sensation. So for this next part, we're going to get rid of these cutaneous nerve sensations and focus on the motor part of these. Okay, so we're going to do the specific muscles now. So we know that the femoral nerve, remember that that was responsible for flexion of the hip and extension of the knee. So flexion of the hip, these three muscles are the pectineus, the iliacus, and the sartorius. The sartorius, if you do a cadaver lab, they love to pin that one because it kind of looks like a seat belt going across the thigh. It's a very thin strap muscle. Muscles that are responsible for extending the knee that are innervated by the femoral nerve are gonna be the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis and the vastus intermedius, aka the quad muscles. Next, we have the obturator nerve. And remember, those are the muscles that will adduct or bring the, the thigh into the body. So the adductor longus, the adductor brevis, the gracilis, the adductor part of the adductor magnus, and the obturator externus. So the nice thing about those is that most of those start with adductor so that you can remember that they adduct the thigh. Remember the common fibula we mentioned, that's a good exam question because that comes from the posterior to the anterior side of the leg. So this is the biceps femoris short head only. That's a good exam question. Then we have the superficial fibula and remember that is responsible for eversion or bringing the bottom of the foot laterally. So that's going to be the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis, or you may see it as the peroneus longus, peroneus brevis. Next, we have the deep fibular, and remember that is responsible for dorsiflexion, so bringing the toe towards the back, inversion of the foot, bringing the underside more medially, and then extension of the toes. So dorsiflexion and inversion of the foot is going to be tibialis anterior, and this one is really important if a patient has something called foot drop. It's usually a defect with the tibialis anterior. The fibularis tertius is another muscle that's responsible for dorsiflexion and foot inversion. The muscles that are responsible for extension of the toes are going to be extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus, and hallucis just refers to the big toe. Next, we're going to go to the posterior side of the leg, and that's going to be the superior gluteal nerve. Remember that these are the muscles that will abduct and medially rotate the thigh. That'll be gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, and tensor fascia lata. Then we have the inferior gluteal nerve, which will extend and laterally rotate the thigh, and that's going to be the gluteus maximum, the very large, um, basically, butt muscle. And this is really important in walking upstairs and in jumping. Remember that the sciatic nerve itself, remember, has the two portions. You have the common fibular and you have the tibial, and the tibial is going to be really the one that's important here. So extension of the hip, flexion of the knee. Biceps femoris, except for the short head, because remember, biceps femoris short head is the common fibular. You have semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The tibial, remember, posterior side of the leg, always pick tibial. So this is going to be plantar inflection, inversion of the foot, and flexion of the toes. And there's two branches of this. You have the deep tibial and the superficial. So the popliteus, the flexor hallucis longus, the flexor digitorum longus, and the tibialis posterior are going to be part of the deep innervation from the tibial nerve. And then the superficial muscles are going to be the plantaris, the soleus, and the gastroc muscle. And sometimes they call it the gastroc soleus complex. Um, but those are the specific muscles for the lower extremity. Next, we're going to talk about the motor innervation to the uh, plantar side of the foot. So we're doing a plantar view here. And this one is pretty, pretty easy. So we have the medial plantar and the lateral plantar. So the medial plantar is going to be closer to the big toe side. And that's going to be your one lath muscles, different from your one half loaf muscles in your hand, but one lath. So this is going to be the first lumbrical, the abductor hallucis, 
the flexor hallucis brevis and the flexor digitorum brevis. Remember that hallucis specifically refla refers to the big toe. Then we have the lateral plantar, and this is going to be quadratus plantae and abductor digiti minimi, meaning going to the small toe. We have the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve, and that's going to supply the adductor hallucis, the second through fourth lumbricals, and the first through third interosseous muscles. And then finally, we have the superficial branch of the lateral plantar nerve, which is going to be the flexor digiti minimi brevis. Remember, brevis means it's a short muscle, so usually coming from within the foot. And then the fourth dorsal interosseous. So if you're ever in a panic, there's a lot more muscles that are innervated by the lateral plantar than the medial plantar. But if you can remember one lap, that kind of helps you with that mnemonic there. And then finally, we're gonna do a foot sensory map. So remember, these are cutaneous nerves, sensory only, not motor. On the dorsal, we have the superficial fibular. The superficial fibular nerve coats most of the skin on the top of the foot, the dorsal side of the foot. You have a small uh, area that's innervated by the sural nerve. And that's gonna kind of wrap around the foot. So you get some on the top, some on the bottom. So it's kind of a sural sandwich there. The saphenous nerve is gonna get the medial side. So the big toe side of the dorsal foot and then the big toe side kind of, again, sandwiching the foot there. This is that deep fibular nerve that I talked about where it comes from the bottom of the foot to the top of the foot that provides sensation in this area. And if somebody were to wear flip flops or sandals that have that kind of thong going through the center there, sometimes you can cause paresthesias over the, dip, the deep fibular nerve because of that sandal. On the bottom side of the foot, we have that lateral plantar nerve that we just talked about, the medial plantar nerve, and then the calcaneal branch of the tibial nerve. So there is your breakdown of the sensation. Remember, cutaneous only of the foot. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you. If you're interested in purchasing the full version, you can go to papods.weebly.com. You'll get the full PowerPoint, a full video, which will include the muscle summary chart, the highly tested concepts. I call these clinical pearls. These are guaranteed points on your test the most highly tested radiology terms with x-rays, and then you'll also get blank versions of the roadmaps, the clinical pearls, and the muscle charts so that you can test yourself uh, prior to the actual test. The cost is $25 per unit, and there is a series of four units available. So I hope this helped you, and have a great day.